Today, we're going to start with a problem. I'll tell you a little story, and then I'll get technical. But first, welcome to this week's Behind the Pencil. The pencil you are watching today belongs to Mr. Berm. That's me. I'm a graphic designer here at Pencilish Animation Studios. So let's get down to business and defeat the puns. I think I'm allowed to make that joke. Is Tom here? Okay, we're good. I work in a myriad of programs, and while I favor Photoshop for drawing, today we're working in Illustrator. Now, now, I know what you're thinking. You just said you were a graphic designer. Of course you work in Illustrator. And while you would be correct, if ever I am designing a logo that needs to scale infinitely, I will always be an Illustrator, hands down. But I'm an artist at heart, and like all you pencil lovers out there, I am attracted to Photoshop's ability to feel like pencil drawing. And this brings us to our first problem. Lightbox Expo is coming up. Tom just landed Pencilish a sweet booth thanks to one of his closest connections. And we, the marketing department, are tasked with generating all of the booth collateral, which is great because that's our job. We need some flyers, some postcards, some stickers, some shameless plugs for Animtune, the best student films in the world. This is also a shameless plug. Go check out Animtune, the best student films in the world. Submit yours today. And we need our deep library of characters on an 8x10 banner for all the world to see. The only problem is all of the development and production artwork we have is 4K or 1080p at 72 dpi as this is the size of the artwork's intended destination in production. We are, after all, making animated content for the screen. But after digging through all of our available artwork for each of our properties, and even experimenting with collages and other approaches to fill up our 8 foot by 10 foot 300 dpi banner, we were faced with the reality that we needed our characters to be bigger. The artwork we had just wouldn't stretch. Not without getting pixelated anyway. So. We needed to recreate all of our characters from scratch as vectors. Our timeline? Two weeks. Step one, draw all of our characters in the scene together surrounding the Pencilish logo and submit it to our CEO for review. Receive feedback. This is too ambitious for our timeline. Step two, agree with your talented, fearless, and famous CEO, allowing him to simplify your workload and character layout for the overall design. Step three, drop into Illustrator and get a handle on your Beziers. I was no stranger to inking characters in Illustrator, but the last time I had done this particular task for real was back before Illustrator ended in two C's. The process back then was much more destructive, but as I quickly got my bearings, I pulled up my britches and got to work. First, you get yourself a good set of ink brushes with varying shapes of thick to thin for Illustrator. Or, for you overachievers out there, make your own. I keep the artwork I am tracing somewhere between 15 and 30% opacity, and lock it on the top layer so I can always see what I'm tracing. Step 4, let's dispense with the steps, shall we? Next, draw your ink lines over your characters, overshooting to create a hot mess that looks like this. Keep these lines on a layer and duplicate them into a new layer, just in case. Adjust the thickness of the lines as needed with the Width tool. When you're all done finessing your line work, select your pile of sticks and go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. You now no longer have control over the center lines in your inks, but your inks are now locked shapes, and this is advantageous when we start lopping off our overshoots. Observe. Take that. And that. And that one too. Once you're done with your character, submit your work to the CEO for notes. Receive your notes and keep moving on to the next character. Address all of your notes in one pass at the end. A note on notes. Notes are part of the process. Yes, there is often a lot of work before receiving the notes, but at the end of the day, the notes make for stronger work. And stronger work makes a bigger impact. You will see me address more notes as the video goes on. At some point, I realized I could go in there after outlining the strokes and delete out lines to replace them or just go directly on top with the eraser tool to finesse edges that would be too tedious to tackle with the shape builder. The shape builder tool, brush, width tool, and eraser are the primary tools I used for this entire inking project, occasionally bopping to the top for that object path outline stroke function. If ever I grew weary, I just remembered that we had to get this to the printer. Lightbox was an immovable deadline. For color, I generally used Illustrator's live paint function, but in some instances, when I needed unique patterns or color without outlines, such as the eyes, I would duplicate the ink layer and draw new shape layers behind, making kind of a ink color sandwich. And plot twist, Dustin's model sheets were approved during this process. Which is exciting because we were now working with the genuine article. This buffalo plaid was a little tricky, but I wound up using Illustrator's repeater tool, outlining the strokes, and subtracting them from a square. From there, I built a pattern. As you can see, it took a few tries to figure out how to warp the pattern across his body. The trick was to warp first, clipping mask after. Once all the characters were inked, inked again, and painted, I destructively used the shape builder tool to merge all the ink lines together into one shape. Then it was time to bring them all over into Photoshop. 
As vectors, they could now scale to this ridiculously large canvas, but the file would still be a little sluggish. As an added note, when I performed this copy-paste function, I was able to bring over all of the layers and groups from Illustrator. This allowed me all of the layering access I needed to make adjustments per character, per inks, per shape, etc. That's why it's always good to keep your layers organized. You will see me scanning over this a bit, and I was mostly checking for tiny anomalies I may have missed. This banner was going to be huge, so it's always worth the double check at scale. The Bjorn characters on top of the logo were the only characters that really had a specific ink coloring in their color palettes. Because I was tight on time, I opted to color their lines in Photoshop by locking transparency on the top ink layer in my ink and paint sandwich and going over them with a brush loaded with the appropriate hue. Once they were looking spiffy, it was time to explore the overall look and feel. I also did some drop shadow touch up around the characters that interacted with each other and the logo just to give them a little added depth. At the end of the day, I presented four different color variants to choose from, and we of course landed on, boom! Purple gradient for the maximum pencilish punch on the Lightbox Expo floor. And there it is. Oh look, there I am. If you saw me at Lightbox, I was bald and purple. If you liked this video, or even if you hated it, subscribe to this channel. Be on the lookout for more from Pencilish Animation Studios. And until next time, stay pencilish. This is Mr. Berm, signing off. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, Pencilish Studios.